Welcome to the Hot Sauce. This is Angel Plumel, a registered dietitian nutritionist in Seattle, Washington. I'm currently at 173 subscribers, and the goal is to make it to 250 by the end of the year. So please help a brother out and like, comment, and subscribe. You can also catch this, previous, and future episodes on your favorite podcasting platforms. Let's get right into it. Today, we are going to feature Lori Wright, a registered dietitian nutritionist that resides in Jacksonville, Florida, and Addie Wright, a registered dietitian nutritionist that resides in Tampa, Florida. All right, so welcome back to the Hot Sauce today. We have a very uh, special episode. I guess this is another mother-daughter combo. We have Lori Wright, who is a fellow media spokesperson and the president-elect for the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. And we have Addie Wright, which is her daughter, and we're going to get to hear about her story and everything. So what we're going to do is we're going to put Lori into the hot seat first, and we're going to let her take over. So Lori, um, pleasure to have you here. I know you've been on a long journey. Maybe you can share it as we go, but let's have an introduction. Tell us about what inspired you to join the profession, where you went to school, internship, what you've been doing in your career. Um, yeah, go for it. Talk about it. Let us Thank lead you. away. I uh, got into dietetics. I was a um, first generation college student. Nobody in my family went to college. And um, so I didn't really know about all those options. My dad once told me, oh, you're going to go to college. You could be a nurse or you be a teacher. I like the hospital setting. So I, I ended up doing nursing. Um, I took in my sophomore year a nutrition class as part of the curriculum and just fell in love because I had been an athlete um, and in high school, especially, I learned that um, if you didn't eat right, you did not do well in, in your sport. Um, and I'd also been, a, I was a chubby kid. So through athletics and nutrition, I um, was able to, to gain um, an act, a healthy weight, but I didn't do it in a healthy way. Um, so I, as that kind of as a primer, when I took nutrition, I was like, ah, oh, this, is, this is terrific. And I went up to the professor and I said, I really like this subject. Is there anything you can like do with it as a profession? And she said, oh yeah, be a dietitian. She didn't tell me about like internship or anything like that. Um, so I graduated from the Ohio State University in dietetics. And then I did um, a combined master's internship at um, Case Western Reserve University in the Cleveland VA hospital. And um, right after graduation, I um, was lucky enough to get a position um, at the Tampa VA hospital and in general medicine. And I just absolutely loved it. And I, I was a diehard clinical dietitian. I specialized in infectious disease. This was a time that, that HIV AIDS was, um, was really a, a significant problem and I specialized in, uh, in infectious disease and worked in the VA hospital for <laughs> many, many years. Um, and um, I always loved dietetic education. We have, Tampa still has a, a dietetic internship. So I loved being a pre preceptor and knew one day I wanted to get my PhD and um, be an internship director. So just about the time I was finishing out like a career at um, the VA. I finished my PhD and I got an opportunity to go to another VA and start a whole new dietetic internship program, which was really exciting. Um, awesome. It, yeah. Then after I graduated, after I finished the internship and my PhD, then I went into higher education and my area of expertise, expertise really changed dramatically uh, from a, you know, a clinical then I started working in the community and was looking at what were the nutritional needs of HIV people at this time. And the number one issue that I found was food insecurity. And that really changed my whole trajectory. And I really have been focusing on food insecurity um, and malnutrition, both uh, domestically and internationally. That is awesome. Yes, uh, you know, I used to work for the VA, so we got a VA crew here. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, thank you for your answer. I guess the the next part of this question or the next question I'd like to ask is, what have you found to be the most 
enlightening and humbling aspect of doing or of being in the media? What would you say? I, um, I really love being a spokesperson and working in media. When I left clinical, that was about the time that I became a spokesperson. And I found that even though I wasn't seeing patients day to day, I still got that fix. I still got to help people through giving good, sound nutrition information in a catchy way, that um, in a doable way, so that maybe I was helping people that were watching my my media segments. Humbling, you can always mess up. Um, you can you can always mess up, and there's always something new coming. And many times you have to go to the books and 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 research it before um, you can really respond. So it can it can definitely keep you humble too. Great answer. <laughs> awesome. Um, next question. So you are, or you, this has been your president-elect year. You're about to become president of the academy. How has this experience been for you? Um, you know, I um, I have d- had a lot of volunteer um, positions within uh, the academy. From affiliate president, I really kind of got my feet wet in dietetics education. I was a a site visitor and on the board for the accrediting body. Um, Then kind of after being affiliate president, I went into more um, advocacy and public policy. Really loved that. Moved into the, um, the House of Delegates and eventually became Speaker of the House. So I really felt like that varied... Um, ex- those varied experiences have taught me a lot about our our member organization and about our profession. And I really want to be a part of moving our profession and our organization forward. Uh, so I was very humbled to be chosen as president-elect. This has been, a, you know, still, I thought I knew a lot about our organization. I'm still learning. And so this has been really quite a year of, of mentorship. And I am excited on June 1st to, um, to start that next chapter uh, as president. There's so many opportunities, so many changes going on. Um, when you think about like the, the, the recent White House conference on hunger, we haven't had one of those for 50 years. And, and what came out of it is how important it is that we um, we prevent malnutrition and promote good nutrition, and that who better to do that than dietitians? And so, you know, we are really re- being recognized for our important role in um, uh, with medical nutrition therapy. We've got uh, we've got to get this medical nutrition therapy act um, finished off so that we can expand reimbursement for dietitians. So there's so many opportunities and not only here and domestically, but we have our fellow dietitians in other countries that look to us as the leaders and they, they want to emulate, they want to use the nutrition care process and nutrition for the physical exam. They want to get accredited with us. So this is a really, you know, an, an important opportunity for us to expand and really think about ourselves as a a global profession supporting one another so that we in turn can provide good nutrition for our citizens. Awesome. Hold on one sec. I'm, I'm recording right now. Just so you're right. Leilani, go upstairs. Sorry, the dog just came back in. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. So thank you. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. So the next question, if you could do it all over again in your career, what would you change and what would you keep the same? This is the toughest question and I don't want to sound anything but genuine. I always say that I love being a dietitian more now after many years, many, many years in the field. (laughs) I love it more than when I became a dietitian. I don't really think there's much I would change. I have had an awesome career an absolutely awesome that the experiences, um, you know, I just got back from a half a year in Ghana practicing nutrition, educating students who gets that. I mean, who gets those type of opportunities and 
it's just um it's been an amazing career uh i think only you know you asked if there's anything i changed i think there was one time that i held on to a position a little too long and um was a little a little hesitant to to take the leap and it wasn't good for me and it wasn't good for the position either um so that really taught me to to believe in myself no you know like it's time you're ready for a new the next chapter don't be afraid it's all going to work out that's great advice for young people to hear because i think sometimes we we all grow and there's no need to make the same mistakes or you know we got to learn from from the past so we can evolve in the future good advice for you Addie, and anybody listening <laughs> so okay well cool next question is what does the future hold for you well uh i two things one i'm really excited to be you know start as president and um the the things you know really that i would like to do um to help our profession and the next generation of dietitians and um and professionally i am i am taking a new position i'm moving to a new university um to uh, become a nutrition director uh build new programs that is what i have really learned that i am that gives me a lot of uh, joy is building new programs i'm very much a, a visionary i don't necessarily like the day to day details as much as you know building and growing um and so i i'm excited about this this next new chapter um and i actually get to go home i get to go back to tampa where i lived and i raised my girls for years and so i'm excited to go back to what feels like home now um and have a new opportunity as a professional. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Just a quick question. Is home Tampa or is home in Ohio? Well, I grew up in Ohio, Columbus, Ohio. Okay. 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 But I've lived in Florida longer than I lived in Ohio. In Ohio. You know? Okay. Okay. And, and nobody in Florida is actually from Florida except Addy. You know, everybody yeah. else, yeah. you know, seems to be from other Parts of transplants day. coming in yeah. yes <laughs> okay well thank you for that so the final question for you Lori, before we switch it over to addy is any words of wisdom for the next generation of dietitians i i i referenced this necklace i wore this specifically this is a charm um from the ashanti people in um in africa and it means unstoppable and i really believe that um the, we have so many opportunities in dietetics i mean just so many opportunities and our scope is growing it's it's so exciting uh with with dietitians more and more getting their scope of practice to include feeding tube placements um you know with things that the progress we're making in telehealth and reimbursement there there's so many opportunities and i really feel like the future dietitians young dietitians and dietetic students you need to go for things you need to take that risk and go for it and it sometimes you know it feels like oh maybe that wasn't the right but you always learn and you when you you're changing you're growing and that's i think keeps makes you a better person i mean we all know that we have to stay up on the evidence and everything but I don't sell yourself short of what of your skills and your talent. Go for it and it and it makes life a lot more exciting. It makes you a better professional. I I always look back to an opportunity I had. I mean, I had practiced for years and I took my interns to hear a dietitian, a pediatric dietitian that um that went and worked in the Dominican Republic and she was sharing about malnutrition and treating these um these children in a developing country and i went up to her afterwards and i said marie this is so exciting i would love to accompany you and she goes well, you know what in about 2 months i'm going on another trip would you like to go with me angel i didn't practice in peds i mean i you know i had and you know that was a pivotal moment for me because i said you know what darn it i'm going to go for this 
And that is really then what embarked me, my whole journey in doing global malnutrition. And now I've been doing it for a decade in all different countries and it's been so meaningful. But if you, if I hadn't taken that leap, if I hadn't gone for it, I, you know, I, it would have been a different story. So. Yeah, no, no, that, that is, that is awesome words to hear. And that's absolutely correct. I think, uh, it's one of these like, you know, oh, should I go apply and be a spokesperson? Right. Oh, yeah. this is too much effort. Yeah. <laughs> Here we are. Here we are a few <laughs> years later. Or any any opportunity. So, yep. so no. Well, when you Thank left you. The, the safety of the VA and went yes. out, you know, that that is that's a risk. That's a big risk. Yes. Absolutely. Well, thank you. Thank you for that. All right. So now we're going to go ahead. We're going to turn it over to Addie. So we're going to put Addie in the hot seat here. Now I got to appreciate Addie for coming in on short notice. So, <laughs> so thank you for that. So, so this is, um, I guess for you, I did meet you at Fancy when we were in Orlando, but I guess, can you tell us about your journey and how your mother has influenced your journey into the profession? Absolutely. Well, thank you for having me, first of all. It's a pleasure to come on. Um, yeah, so I I have been a dietitian for um, for about two years now, almost. Um, I obviously grew up with a, a mom that was very, very passionate about the field. I think I got a, a really unique experience of, you know, we see so many dietitians that have it's their second degree or they've, they've started a career and then they find out about, oh, I can make a living out of doing nutrition. And so many people don't know that. And so they go back for that. I had the unique opportunity of growing up knowing that that was a possibility. And my mom did an amazing job of seeing that I was interested in that from a young age. And so she involved me in it from, you know, driving me, to ballet practice and taking a conference call or, or something in the in the car and me listening in and learning those things. Um, I, I definitely got influenced by that from a very early age. Um, I, I was actually a professional ballet dancer before deciding to go back to school to pursue nutrition. I had always kind of had it in my mind that, you know, as a ballet dancer, that's not a lifelong career. Um, so I had always thought, okay, I, like, I think I want to do nutrition after that, but it was kind of always, you know, just a, just a future possibility. Um, but nutrition was always, you know, a very active part of that. Um, I saw firsthand how important it is to keep up with nutrition, how, how much that can benefit you in performance. Um, but I, I, after a little while, I, I realized that I was I was missing that experience of being in school, of learning, and just being involved in nutrition in general. Um, so I decided to go back, go to school and, and pursue that. Um, I remember the conversation. I called her. She was, you were in India, right? She was in India. I called her and I was just at this point that I, I had made the decision. I'd been thinking about it for a long time, but I finally made the decision wanted to say that to her so i called and i said i i don't i don't think i can do this anymore i don't want to dance anymore i want to go back to school um and she asked me well do you have any idea of what you want to do and i said well nutrition obviously <laughs> um, and you know she never wanted to impose that on me or or you know make me feel like i had to do that but she was always supportive of it um and so i don't know it's it's such a, a unique opportunity that we get to to share together um and yeah so i'm i'm very thankful that i i was exposed to that so early because it completely shaped where i am now to the point where i'm i'm still in my first position as a dietitian but so my first position i'm the general medicine dietitian at the tampa va which was her first position at <laughs> the same exact va um didn't plan that, but that's what happened. Um, and, and I'm very thankful for that. But so she's clearly a, a very um, heavy influence on me for the best. Awesome. Life Thank works you. in mysterious we'll ways, to, you know? We'll have to send you a picture. We have a picture of Addie when she was two and a half, maybe. And she put my lab coat on 
Oh, God. Uh, you know, with the VA emblem on there. Yeah, 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 yeah. We had beepers, you know, that was the beeper in the pocket. Yep, the pagers, yep. Like swimming in this lab coat. And then, like, 20 years later, she, I mean, that she literally stepped into that position. Is it in the same office or different Not office? The same office. Changed offices a little bit, but okay. still, okay. still same facility. We're, yeah, we're awesome. getting a new no, bed. That's, that's pretty sweet. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's pretty sweet. Where, um, so uh, let us know where you went to school, where you did your internship, and and so we know you're at the Bay Pines. Is it the Bay Pines VA, right? James A. Haley. No. So it's Tampa. James VA. A. Haley. 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 Yeah. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Bay Pines so, is across the water. Sorry. So. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So I I did my undergraduate. Um, at University of North Florida. Um, okay. And then I did my internship at Mayo Clinic in Jacksonville. Um, I It was a very close, a difficult decision for me if I wanted to do, I applied to Mayo and then to the Tampa VA internship. Um, with going with Mayo, I could stay at home. It was, a, both were amazing programs, of course, um, but just for my, my needs in, in that moment, made the decision to go with Mayo Clinic and then was fortunate enough to match with them. Um, I also had a, you know, I was a diet clerk at Mayo Clinic. I shadowed a dietitian there. So I had a lot of good experience with them. So it made sense to go with that. Um, and then the timing of the internship worked out very well that it allowed me to thankfully accept my my first position with the Tampa VA then um, while, just as I was graduating from um, the internship. Now you got to stay home. That's pretty sweet. Yeah, <laughs> money. Very, very helpful. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, awesome. Um, so I guess the question, you know, your mother's been actively involved in the profession. What can we expect from you in the future? What do you what are you thinking here? Yeah. So I similarly to what she said, you know, being a diehard clinical dietitian at first for her, um, even in school, I knew that clinical was what I wanted to do at least at first, at least for a while. Um, and as a general medicine dietitian, I, I couldn't be happier in my position of, I'm a big believer in, in lifelong learning. And every day I learn something new about nutrition, about working with the interprofessional team. Um, so I, I love my position and I would like to continue doing that for a while longer. Um, but you know, being involved being at the VA, I'm very fortunate in that I'm able to be involved in a lot of new programs that we're implementing. We just brought the bariatric program to the Tampa VA, um, so I was able to help with the implementation of that. Um, so a lot of opportunities with that that I'm continuing to work on. Um, I'm also currently um, getting my master's degree to further education that way. And eventually down the line, I um, I want to get my a practice doctorate, like a DCN, um, and eventually teach because um, that's a, a big passion of mine. I'm really enjoying being a preceptor to our dietetic interns right now. Um, I'm in my second class for that, and I, I love teaching, so definitely see that in my free, my future. Okay, sweet. That's good to hear. All right. So the final question for you, Addie, is any words of advice for people coming into the profession you've been in for, well, you've had your mother as a guiding light and you've had some good experiences. Any words of wisdom for people coming in? Absolutely. I would echo what my mom said about definitely going for things. Our profession is so amazing and so unique in that I, I truly believe that you can never get bored in it. There are so many opportunities. And like she said, it's growing. Our scope of practice is growing. What the environments that we're working in is growing. So there's always new opportunities. And especially as a, a new dietitian, you never know what you're going to love doing. Um, you can have you know those ideas, but once you get into something, it can take you by a total surprise and, and you know, shape your career for the rest of your life. So I would say definitely don't hesitate to go for those experiences. Try to get as many diverse experiences as you can to really kind of carve out your path in, in our amazing profession. Cool. Awesome. All right. So I'm going to take you off the hot seat here. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, thank you both. So Lori, I'm going to ask you, how does it feel to have your daughter be in the profession? <laughs> Well, I don't even, I don't want to get emotional. I think it's, 
I, I really feel like it's my biggest accomplishment. It's my biggest um, contribution to the profession because she is a better dietitian than I ever was. I mean, she's incredible. We have these um, these really cool moments where, um, I mean, when she was a little girl, her she has twin sisters and that are older, and then Addy. Um, I used to take them to the hospital because I really believed, you know, they needed to learn all those opportunities that are available to them. Um, and it's not just being a teacher or a nurse. Um, so I really always wanted to expose them, and they went to the hospitals hospital with me. This was obviously before a lot of the strict regulations, you know, but, um, mm -hmm. and so in the electronic medical record, it's still uh, several times it happened, it's happened at least what, five times now? A handful of times. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Did you see your person. name pop up? That it, will, <laughs> on the encounter. So it'll be Lori Wright saw this same patient in this year. And yeah. then Addie Wright sees, or Addison Wright sees the same patient. And that just, it, it feels every so time, <laughs> you know, and I, I mean, I, I, um, I actually had her in one class and I just like, and I can see, I can tell you like her critical thinking skills were so advanced and I'm just so proud of the dietitian that she is. And, you know, she got to come to Ghana when I was over there and, you know, th there we were side by side and, and, um, the malnutrition hospital and, um, our big teaching hospital and it was just like to me it was like one of the highlights of my whole whole career awesome well that's pretty i mean this is pretty pretty great to see and hear and i i appreciate good stories and i appreciate both of you sharing yours so thank you both for participating it was lovely to have you on the i'm also on the platform buy me a coffee this is a platform that allows creators like myself to create content and get rewarded in a variety of payments. I've decided to do it via coffee. So if you'd like to buy me a coffee, you can do so. And if you want to send one to the uh, individual I'm interviewing, send it to me and I will send it their way. With that being said, thank you very much for being here with us today. I hope you really enjoy the video and have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye.